everybody. This is you. Can you see you? Yeah. Okay. We're getting real close right now. Ooh. <laughs> So we're recording this. Um, I'll be posting this out for everyone if you guys are watching this in the recording. Uh, so we're going to do an interview today with uh, a gentleman by the name of Sean Bennett. That's this guy. Uh, Sean Bennett is, uh, is my best friend. Here we go. An amazing trader, business partner, entrepreneur, father, husband, amazing person, charitable giver. Too nice. Uh, Too nice right now. Investor, <laughs> cryptocurrency <laughs> specialist, miner. He does everything. So we're going to have probably, I think right now, the first re video real life trading interview. Um, he took out an hour of his work today to be with us. So thanks, man, for that. My pleasure. I appreciate that. Yeah. We're going to ask this guy a lot of questions today. Uh, the questions we're going to be talking about is um, kind of the things you were discussing. So we're, we're not going to be trading anymore today. I'm, I'm done for the next hour. We got the afternoon room later. But for the next few minutes, we're going to ask this guy about time management, fear, getting started, his journey. And uh, all those good questions. So just really quick, Sean, what's, give us your journey. Like, how'd you get started? What did it look like when you first started learning about the stock market? So in 2012, I had uh, started, sold a bunch of companies most of my life. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm no Matt DeLong, if you guys are familiar with Matt DeLong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he probably beats me by a long shot, but... Uh, in 2012, I had had some savings and my wife and I were talking about, hey, what, what are we going to do with these savings? Like we had sold some companies and we had been in real estate. What, how do we have our money make money, right? That's the big question. And so we're like, okay, well, let's, let's get a financial planner and have somebody like um, put our money to use, you know, in the markets. And so in 2012, by the end of 2012, I said, you know, let me do a little research and make sure I can speak their language before I just call somebody up and they juke me with their terminology. So I, <laughs> so I, so I started studying and uh, there's so many resources out there to, to tell you uh, about trading, you know, and ultimately I stumbled into trading options, mainly defined risk strategies, you know, in covered calls, doing iron condors and butterflies. And so I think I, I started in the deep end from what I've been told. And I just took like a couple thousand dollars to start with. I, I convinced my wife. I said, let me take $2,000 and see if I can make money with this. Yep. So I took $2,000, opened up a TD Ameritrade account, started trading options. And uh, it just began to blow my mind. So that year, within the, within the year, I generated a little over a 10% return. So like a 12% return on capital, which was great. Nobody in the world is going to give you that type of return. They may give you 4%. You're not going to get that out of a 401k. No. Um, and so I was like, wow, this is really cool. So then I was able to like prove to my wife, Hey, I, I think I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. I'm not an expert, but Hey, let's try this. So I began to learn a lot of different other different strategies. And ultimately I found that I really love uh, the short side of, of things. And so I started trading stocks and not just options. Then I started day trading options. And so I'm the, one of those type of people that when I want to learn something, I go all in. I go really hard, really deep, fast, and yes. I just soak it all up. And that can be sort of dangerous to an extent in the stock market. But that was really my introduction in 2012 in why I even got into the markets. Yeah. And nobody's going to trade your money like you're going to trade your money because you worked hard for that. Or I would say the majority of us have worked hard for that. So we're going to really pay attention to what's that doing. Now, obviously, your emotions come into play, and that could – affect you in a good way or a bad way, you got to pay attention to that. But that was really my foray into yeah. the markets. I love it, man. Um, so you open up a TD Ameritrade. Why that? Did you go like review stuff? Or what was, what was your brokers of your choice? How'd you pick that one? Um, probably just mainstream advertising. Yeah, I just okay. saw TD every, I used to travel the country and I would yeah. see TD stuff everywhere. I actually like the way the platform looked, thinkorswim platform. Yeah. And so I think I probably picked it more because of that platform. I liked the way options looked. I, I signed up for a paper trading account mm -hmm. and I like started trading op paper trading options and I really liked the platform. So ultimately um, I, I called them and nego I'm a big negotiator. So I called and negotiated my fees down before I even was trading. So uh, I, I was able to get fairly good fee structure and I like the platform. So that's really why I picked TD. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, 
So you talked about diving into something like full, full on. And I'll tell you guys from personal experience that that is, that is what Sean does. If it's grilling or you haven't done bash fishing yet, but if you did, yeah. I, could, I could imagine <laughs> if it was Rubik's cubes, uh, guitar, whatever it is, drums. So he plays guitar, drums, keyboard, right? Yep. Um, so anything he learns, he, he immerses himself. And uh, they had, there was actually a trader right before he walked in the room that was asking about that. And I think it's just a valid question regarding when you start something brand new, give us your take on what you think and how you think the process should be. So let's say it's, um, give me something that you, you don't know anything about. I don't know anything about? Yeah, Ooh. something you know nothing about. Uh, okay. You know a lot uh, about stuff. But... Um, neuroscience. Okay, so tell us what you would do to learn about neuroscience. So I say that because I'm about to start studying neuroscience. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, that's funny. Uh, my goal, and I've had this goal for a few years, is I read a book a week or a, about a book a week. Okay. And so for me, I'm, the great Warren Buffett says knowledge is power. I think this the second part of that is it's only powerful if you do something with it, right? I know a lot of people that read a lot of books; they do nothing with it. It's just information at that point. Yeah. So how do you turn information into application? So for me, you have tons of resources like a YouTube to go learn how to rebuild a transmission, but there's a difference between me learning the information of how to do that and me actually rebuilding a transmission. Yeah. So I think that's a very valuable part in what really makes me tick is I don't want to just learn the stuff to learn it. I want to learn it to be able to take that, mesh it around, break it apart and use it and figure out how it can make me a better person. Yeah. So in business, I found that really the most complicated part of business is people, you know, and when you really boil that down, it really boils down to who that person is and personality and how they think and make decisions and process that. So I said, you know, maybe I should really study like double click in and study neuroscience, right? The neocortex or the limbic part of your brains mm -hmm. and how you really create those pathways to make choices and decisions. Right. And that's really what you do over the period of your life. Right. You're creating this highways in your brain that affect how you make decisions today. And that's applicable to anything. So for me, I went and researched what are some of the best books to get the best information possible on neuroscience. Okay. And maybe I can watch, I love interactive stuff. So I love videos or okay. I'm actually going to go meet with a neuroscientist okay. and a brain surgeon. I want to know what makes them tick, what gets them excited sure. about operating on your brain. There's something deep down in there that I can take away and apply to my own life. So I think a book is one thing, but what's the application? I need to go sit and talk to somebody who deals with this on a daily basis and go, tell me how this has influenced your life because I want it to influence my life. Yeah. And yeah. the great Jim Rowan says, you're an average of the five people that you hang around the most part of the time. So are you hanging out with people who have no money? Are you hanging out with people who are smarter than you? Are you hanging out with people who are nicer than you? You ultimately will become all of those things if you surround your world with those types of people. So I continually surround myself with great people like this guy right here. <laughs> and it ultimately brings me up, right? It's going to elevate your average, right? Or I say it rises the tide. When you rise the tide, all boats come up. So if I'm around to people who are constantly rising the tide, my level of life is going to escalate yeah. eventually. Yeah. Thanks for the kind words, man. I love you. Yeah. Um, your, okay. So the, the approach, if you want to learn something brand new, you're going to immerse yourself into something you mentioned, all right, get, get a good book, then go watch some videos and then go find an expert and talk to them. Yep. Why most people have a fear of spending money doing one of those three things. Mm. Let's, let's get into the fear and the psychology. Cause if you're going to talk neuroscience, I mean, that's, that's all that is right. Trading is 80% mental. What are people afraid of when they're starting something um, like trading or neuroscience or if they're trying to become a doctor or they're trying to go to school and, and or they're trying to start a business? Mm. What are people afraid of? Probably, I mean, you and I talk about this a lot. The number one thing is failure. It's fear of failing. You're going to fail. But is, but is it really? Are people really afraid of failure, though? Uh, I think, I like, like let's, let's relate this to a dating scenario. Why? Okay. Why? Why is it so easy? I'm very intrigued in this. You get on an app on your phone and you swipe left or right. And that's all based on a picture. It's not based on a conversation. Why don't you just go have the conversation? Because you know that in that conversation, you can fear failure. You can feel like you fail because you didn't end up 
having something that that moved on but when you when you swipe right it releases dopamine in your brain it makes you feel euphoric causes you to take it the next step to get you beyond that yeah so i think you know the app's genius right all of these dating apps are really smart because they take away the instant feeling of failure when you do that face to face and it automatically gives you gratification because you got to accept something, feel something really great and positive and you know you're going to go meet somebody and you don't have that barrier as if, Hey, we're in a bar. You have to go talk to them right now. Yeah. The app goes, Hey, I just connected you and you don't have to do the work of walking. So, but my question is, is it fear of failure or is it fear of pain? Because, I mean, failure in itself is just a concept. It, sure. you know, so if you go out and you say, hey, person, you know, do you want to go out on a date with me? Or do you want to be my friend? Or would you mind mentoring me? And that person says no. It's the reaction that happens. I mean, is it failure or is it like the pain? It's probably, I'd say, I mean, this is a deeper subject. Sure. I mean, I think there's probably some shame in that. Mm. Some, uh, Nobody wants to be shamed or judged. No, uh, no. judging. Like, uh, let's go there. Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, we're instantly, look at look at social media now. It's okay. all about perception. Yep. So people are constantly judging you. Uh, that's probably a large piece, too. I think there's a lot wrapped into that. The pain is very good because it causes an emotional response, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of just a thought, it causes something you to feel something. I think that's where pain is separated a little different than some of those other things, right? Okay, sure. Um. And I think that scares a lot of people, Yeah. to be honest. Well, that's why most people don't do well with death, because it sure. hurts. Yeah, yeah. It hurts. Well, then how, how do people get over fear of failure? Like, what, what are your steps? If you, if you're, so you want to learn about neuroscience, and you're going to go meet a doctor. That doctor could say, no, I'm too busy for you. How did you get over that fear of, of reaching out and asking that person? Um, I mean, or if you're a trader, you know, fear I would of say, losing or whatever. I would say number of occurrences. Okay, tell me more. So about that. I would say, for me, it's you know, he that person may say no, and I actually get this all the time. They're like, no, I don't have time. I'll then I'll go to somebody else because somebody is going to be willing to say yes to you, and that's okay because I, I that's why I love Greg McCown's book Essentialism. Mm -hmm. It's like the it's number one. Book. It's the good number book. one book I recommend that everybody reads. That's your number one. That's the number one. Really, literally out of every book, I've read it three times since it, it got published three years ago. I'll read it again this year. Let me hop over to my uh, just a really quick uh, Essentialism. Uh, I did read this one on your recommendation. I should become like a salesman for Greg McCown, <laughs> you know. But his whole thing is that say no to ninety percent of things. Say yes to ten percent, and that way you're giving your best yes. So somebody wants to say yes to you. Yeah. You just have to go in with a mindset of knowing that you're gonna get a no, but that's okay. It's a good no to get a great yes. Ah. So me, it's like maybe that neuroscientist said no to me, but I know a better one's gonna come along, and I'm gonna get a yes. Out and it's of that. okay. Yeah. And that is okay. Yeah. The, I will say what's interesting about that is, and I, I'll say this, this is a random thing. This is something me and Sean have talked about a few months back. Uh, if you want any help with getting over the fear of failure or the fear of rejection, um, have people say no to you, like in person. So practice, like mm -hmm. you asking someone something like, hey, can I have some of your coffee? And that person just goes, no. no. And then you, you feel that like, why that person? You, your, your body gets that mesh. It kind of like reverberates and you feel weird, but then the pain passes immediately. And if you practice that over and over and over, you build up a tolerance because that's, I mean, that's what I did through all of my uh, mentorship stage when I reach out to people. I got those all the time. And, uh, you know, you, you get used to it, I guess. It's, it's kind of like a scab that covers over. Yeah. It's, um, a, it's, a mu it's like a muscle. It's a muscle, yeah. You got to break it down and it, it becomes stronger. And it gets way, e you know this, you yeah. have a testament, it gets easier. It just takes time, like everything. All great things take time. Yeah. I, do. All, great th all great things take time. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good statement. Um, Tim Ferriss was talking about in one of his podcasts regarding make a, you know, make a lot of no's and say your best yeses. He was talking about rating something. And this is, a cool, um, this is cool for trading as well. If you guys want to uh, like kind of rate your trades, we do that every now and then in the trading room if we get bored or whatever. We'll say, hey, guys, give us on a 1 to 10 scale, 10 being amazing, 1 being you know, horrible, what's this trade like? But no 7s. Can't do a 7. Have you heard that before? 
But yeah, it's like it's so you can't thing. Yeah. you can't do a seven because seven. seven's like yeah, it's, it's okay. In between. It's, it's, like, it's, yeah. like, it's a little bit you know because you know five is like I don't care. So you can't it's do true. seven. So if it's an eight, nine, or ten, it's a yes. You're right. If it's not that, then why are you yeah. even talking about? It? Well, some people say uh, I forget. I was telling somebody yesterday about there's a business that does customer satisfaction, and you either give it a one or a five. It's either terrible or it's great. And they measure very well. It's a yes or a no. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. Because you start getting in between, and then everybody has a different scale, yeah. a different measuring stick, a different ruler. And how do you really measure that? You can't. So, like, hey, it's like a one or a five, you know? Yeah. So, is, how, it, is it a is it a okay trade, not good trade, or is it great? Because only take the great ones, right? Yeah. So, how would you say? How do we help people get over the fear of uh, failing in trading? Hmm. I would say uh, you need to lose money. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's that's so counterintuitive to yeah. everybody else probably in your twitter feed is that you need to lose some money you need to feel some pain you need to learn from that because it's going to be great when you have that i've had that that ten thousand dollar trade in like minutes and your PL goes up 10 grand and then it's it's like it's worth it it's that appreciation people say the mountaintop only looks so good if you understand what it looks like in the valley. Yeah, yeah. Like, you only really appreciate. I mean, I love, like, Gary Vee's kind of crazy, but he'll tell you, it's like, you don't know what it feels like to get that million dollars until you've, like, po been poor before and you had nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like, you need to appreciate, especially in trading, understanding that that was a bad trade. You shouldn't have made that call. You lost money. It's going to hurt. So when you do make a really good decision in a great trade and it makes money and you go, okay, I need to do more of that. And it's probably going to be boring as Jeremy says. So how much money should they lose? I think everybody has a different threshold. <laughs> so don't Mine go, was all of it. Yes. Mine was sure. every dime. <laughs> yes, it was. So don't, don't do that. Don't trade silver options and, <laughs> and buy at the peak. So Do not do what I did. Don't lose all of your money. That's stupid. I would say don't go all in, but don't be a cheapskate. It's got to be a good, happy medium, right? So don't take, your, don't take everything that's in your savings account, but take enough to where it would hurt if you lost that. We do, we do that with everything else in our life. Mm -hmm. Like what? Well, I mean, time, for instance. Okay, tell me. Family Christmases. Okay. It hurts sometimes, but we do it. <laughs> sure. Or I just sometimes choose not to because yeah. maybe there's a better yes somewhere else. So, right. I would say you have to really find what that looks like. So I would find I'm a, I'm a big math person. I love spreadsheets. So do some formulas. Like what do you like? It's funny that people tell you when you're buying a wedding ring, you know, or, or a ring for your partner, you know, take three months worth of your income and buy a ring like that didn't come out of thin air. There's a reason why, because it's like, you don't need to be cheap, but you don't need to leverage everything. So maybe, Hey, take, three months worth of your rent and mm -hmm. trade that or mm -hmm. what you bring in, yeah. like find that math for you that goes, okay. And there's I a reason why this. I care about this. Yeah. It's not like, Hey, I got, I've got people who are getting in the crypto space. They're like, I put 50 bucks in. I'm like, really? I'm going to sneeze $50 today. 50, yeah. I mean, like $50. You got you to care. Yeah. If you're going to do something, you got to care about it. Yeah. So I, I think there's a happy balance between crazy risk and very, very no. low risk. Right. You have to risk money to make money. Takes sure. money, takes money to make money. Absolutely. Um, this is this is an interesting topic. Uh, this is one I get a lot, and we're going to start getting a little bit more into trading too. But Mark Cuban talked about diversification, and I don't know if I ever sent you that video. I probably did, but he more or less said diversification is for people who who are afraid because they don't Ooh. they don't know what they're investing in. I agree. Um, tell me your thoughts on 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 investing and diversification because you. Came from the South like I did. We had very similar upbringings. You've heard the term, and I, everyone has. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a Southern term or not, but don't put all of your eggs in one basket. How do you uh, correlate the don't put all of your eggs into one basket with don't lose too much money with be aggressive and mm. make money on, on the right trade? How do you correlate those three things? For me, it all drills down to passion. Okay. So let's take Mark Cuban, for instance. Okay. He's a billionaire. Yep. He actually made all of his billions on one thing. It was selling broadcast.com. <laughs> Internet sports radio. Yeah, who would have thought? He just did a really great business deal. Good for, so him. Good for him. The reason why he's a billionaire is because he did one thing really, really well. 
right? And I think it's because he was passionate about it. He yeah. was like, hey, I love sports. Yeah. Why can't other people hear sports games? He was passionate about it. He followed that. He rolled the dice, freaking slept on a floor in a car, you know, and it paid off because he was committed, right? You say it, it'd be, it's better to be a master at something than to be kind of okay at a lot of things. So mm. I think the diversification is the mediocre of a lot of things. And you never really have any wins, right? So for me, I'm like, take two or three things that you're really passionate about and double down, right? And the goal is you hopefully one of those J curves and explodes. Yeah. And that's really what you want. Yeah. You know, I love, I loved, I love money. I really love money. It's great. I love what money can do. It allows me to be able to do great things for other people, right? Somebody needs tires on their car. I can go buy them tires, right? That's why I love yeah. money. Yeah. And so for me, we were going to put our money into something and I, I really value what that is. So I want to get educated. And then I found that I'm actually passionate about the stock market and what it does for people. Sure. It's a beautiful thing. Sure. So I'm only in the markets because I'm passionate about it. Yeah. You should not get into the markets just to make money. That's a bold statement. It is a very, you know, what's funny, dude. I don't know if I've ever said that to you or you've never said it to me, but I, we have the exact same opinion because I truly do not believe uh, when people come to you and go, I want to make a lot of money. Uh, what stock should I buy? Not the right answer, uh, or not the, not the right question. I don't yeah. have a, I don't have an answer for that question because if all you want to do is make money, the stock market is not for you. It's not. There's for a you. lot of other ways to make money. I'll, I mean, business. Go into business, start your own business. Yep. Do that. Absolutely. Make a lot more money doing that than trading. Totally. <laughs> for You're sure. Absolutely right. But if you want to make money, um, that's fine. There's a lot of avenues. That's fantastic. But the stock market is not only for that. You got to love the stock market. You gotta love it. You gotta love trading. Yep. And when you talked about the market rewarding the specialist, you talked about uh, really focusing in on two or three things. You guys have heard me talk about focusing on one stock before and saying, this is the stock that I love. What that might entail is doing videos on that, figuring out who the CEO, the COO, the CFO, the CIO, mm -hmm. doing some research on Google and figuring out who those people are and what they say. Mm -hmm. Right. If you like Apple, then go read some Tim Cook stuff, some Steve Jobs stuff. Go look at the, you know, go read some deep down, like who's running the company? What are their thoughts? Um, five Hour Energy is not publicly traded, but I love the CEO and I forget his name. He's uh, great. So the Five Hour Energy CEO, uh, he's a billionaire and I've researched, uh, his, one of those, his long name, I forget, his, I can't, I'm just going to pronounce it. I'm going to pronounce it wrong. If you're watching this, <laughs> which you're not, but if you sorry. are, I'm sorry. Hey, you never know. Uh, I could probably pull it up really quick. But anyway, if you love a company, like, so I love Square. You guys remember I talked about Square. Um, I mean, that, that's one of the first companies I told you about yep. a year and a half ago. The reason I liked it is because I, number one, I was interacting with it. I knew their product. I knew how they made money. Uh, mm -hmm. I researched their CEO. I researched their CTO, the chief technology officer, um, who is a, uh, Who's one of the main people in Stellar, by the way, Stellar Lumens, the cryptocurrency. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I knew there some of the companies they integrated with. So I knew a lot about Square and I knew their products. So I was like, okay, I'm going to invest in this one large. I'm going to put some money, some solid chunk of money into this one because you got you got to do the research. Spend the time. If you know it, if you don't know it, don't do anything. I don't trade General Motors or Ford because I don't drive General Motors or Ford. Mm -hmm. I've had bad experiences with General Motors or Ford. Yep. I'm not saying anything bad if you work there. All I'm saying is I Comcast. <laughs> we were making fun of Comcast the other day. Look at this stock on Comcast. Look how much money we missed out on this thing, Sean. I know. You, look at this I chart. I can't even like try to put money into it. I don't even care. Look at this chart, dude. Let me, let me just turn off the moving oh, average for a second. Oh, my goodness. Look at this thing. From $8. It's like a, like a mountain. 30 it's massive. Look at this. $42. Huge. So why did I not invest in Comcast? I don't like the company. I don't like their internet. I don't like their prices. I don't like their customer service. I can continue. I can't get behind any of that. So I didn't invest in like a, a beautiful breakout. Beautiful breakout. Yeah, I mean, I could <laughs> I'm going like. <laughs> You're making me feel bad. I'm not trading it. You know what? I, I People ask me all the time. They're like, what do you put your money into? I trade two things. Tell me. Oh, tell me. Well, in in the in in the in, stock market. In the stock market. Yeah. Not in crypto space. Yeah, let's not talk about that right now. Hold another call, hold another discussion. In the beginning, I traded everything because I'm like, if it makes I, this is my thing, if it makes money, I want to be in it. Sure. I say that's kind of like my phrase everywhere in business and everything. If it's making money, this Give guy wants to be in yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Who has two thumbs? 
<laughs> I want to be in it, right? So in the market, it was the same way. I'm like, it's making money, it's making money. And I was chasing and I was getting in other th things people were getting in. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Like, I don't do this in my regular life. You know, I research things and I get passionate and on board. Why am I trading this bio stock, you know? Mm, yeah. And I'm like, geez, I don't know this. And then I lose money. So I, try to, I trade two things. I trade SPY and I trade Apple. SPY and AAPL. You know what I love SPY? Because it just makes money. And I love Apple because I love the company. My life is literally functions around All Apple. Apple products. They're a profitable company. I believe in who they are and how they do business. Why not all in? And I, I naturally just study their stuff. And I'm like, I know a lot about Apple. Why don't I trade a lot of Apple? Yeah. Right? I don't have to trade everything else. For a while, I traded Google because I really love Google. It's just expensive. It's expensive and I lost money. And I'm like, why well, don't I want to be in something that I'm losing money? I'll do something that makes money. And Apple's always made me money. Do you do shares, leaps? Um, I do shares in both. And then I trade options around that. Yeah. Okay. So you get, you're in shares. If it's going up or down, you'll kind of leverage options. Absolutely. I mean, that's why options were created was for leverage. So things Absolutely. are tanking. You can buy some puts as protections, so you don't wig out Yep. in your long term. Now are those investments or those trades? Do you have stops or do you just use protective puts? Um, all of the above. Okay. So since I'm hardcore on two things, yep. I trade a, a lot of different vehicles with those two things because depending on what's going on, maybe Apple around Apple's earnings, I'm going to trade a different type of strategy yeah. than I would if I'm just doing a long term. I've got I want to dump a bunch of capital and buy and hold. Right. Or maybe it's like they had some bad news, so shoot, I'm going to get into some calls and make some money on the downside. I'm not even putting into play the stock that I have into play in that. I'm going to trade a different. I'm going to trade the insurance on that stock, but maybe I want to make a, do a day trade. And so I'm going to day trade that differently than I trade a long term. But I know so much about it. I can change vehicles, right? I can shift gears mm -hmm. and it's totally okay. I don't think that's linear. Yeah. So I don't think you can just do, go do whatever you want to in other stocks. I think you really need to know. You say this very well. You're like, if you drive a Tesla car, you should own a bunch of Tesla stock, right? Because you love the company enough. You want to drive their car. I think so. You should learn more and own the stock and be bought in. I totally agree with that. I own some Budweiser stock, as you know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't drink Budweiser, so <laughs> they, I don't own Budweiser. They own other. They own other companies. I know, but I drink other small craft breweries that probably I'm probably do trade. Well, so it's all good. I, I probably shouldn't tell you this because it's going to mess you up. Have you ever heard of Brew B R E W? I haven't. It's a Craft Brew Alliance. See, ETF. I should own so much. Oh, look at that! Look, look at that! that. It's about to break out. Yeah, I need to buy it about twenty uh, nineteen seventy five or something like that. Yeah, look at this stock. This is an ETF, I think. Shoot, uh, I need to get into that, and, anyway. and then I'll sell it to the short side at about twenty two. Craft Brew Alliance is it, it was just an interesting ETF, but uh, I mean, yeah. The, the point is, guys, if you find yourself um, loving Netflix, so Netflix is the only stock that is in my girlfriend's IRA. Huh? This is the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that gap up. It is it is comical, but it's beautiful. So she was asking me, what should I invest in? Now, you know, she's younger. She's 25. Um, I mean, I'm, we're not old, but we're she's good. just younger than I am. There okay, that's all I'm saying. Wrong with that. um, so, she's only tw so she's 25. She has an IRA. Um, it's not a million dollars, right? So she's asked me, what should I do? What should I invest in? I was like, well, put it into a company that you really love. What's one company that you know how they make money, you use them every day, and you love their service? Within a mm. second, she said Netflix. I said, take all of your money, buy shares of Netflix, and hold it for five years. That's good. It's working out for her. She's up 50%. In the, not bad. When I first started trading, a guy that I listened to a lot of his stuff, is, you know who he is, Tom Sosnoff. And yeah. He says, Tom? He said, it's, it's valuable that I took away. He said, trade companies that you're willing to give your credit card to. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. So if you pay a subscription to Netflix, trade that company. Yeah. If you spend a lot of money at the Gap, should trade the gap. Yep. You spend a lot of money Budweiser, you should trade Budweiser, right? You should. The things that you invest, you're investing into that, right? You're stimulating the economy. You're a, you are a customer. You're bought in, right? If you fly a certain airline all the time, you should probably own stock in it, right? Southwest. Remember, I talked to a Delta. We, we were flying. We talked to the Delta uh, flight attendant. We were like, yes! hey, so are you in Delta stock? I'm, she's like, no, no, I didn't opt into that. We're like, you're an idiot. Lady girl. Really? Call, call your boss. Work this out now. Get her on you the phone. You literally worked for Delta. You should own a bunch of Delta stock. Uh, yeah. Here's know. the thing. If you do work for a company that is publicly traded, 
you better be buying shares. You better be in there. Unless, unless you hate the company. And, you, <laughs> and if you hate the company and you want to get out tomorrow, don't buy shares. But if you even like remotely like the company, you're going to be there for three more years. Seymour, you're in Best Buy. You work for Best Buy. Do you have any Best Buy shares? Please say yes. Please say yes. Please say yes. <laughs> if not, you just go buy them right now. Yeah, go set. 450. There you go. There we go. So the thing is, if you work at Walmart, if you work at Target, if you work at McDonald's, people make fun of. By the way, Here's one thing that I have never done since I was in middle school is I never made fun of anyone flipping burgers at McDonald's. I would never do that. When people say, oh, you could go get a job flipping burgers at McDonald's. I know a lot of people who started doing that. They bought some shares and they make some good money right now. Do people okay. that I went to college with, I, I was like, hey, congrats. Because I told them back in the day, yeah. go buy some shares at McDonald's. That was, that was 20 years ago. Not yeah. 20 years ago. Oh, that was nine. 15 years ago. Oh, amazing. It went up a little bit since then. So that's the, crazy. Yeah, but the thing is, like, hey, you're flipping burgers, you're making money, take some of that money, buy some shares at McDonald's. Like, that, hey, that, you can become CEO that way if you want. It doesn't matter. You work at a you're bank, absolutely right. buy some shares. Um, you're the busiest guy I've ever met. Tell mm. me about your time management. Am I the busiest guy? You, got, you have a wife and a daughter. Uh, yes. You have 947,416 hobbies. Yes. You run numerous businesses. Yes. Um, tell, me, tell me a little bit about time. I'm How do you so manage busy. time? trading, stock market research, reading, exercising, eating right. What's the secret of time? To me, it's all about where you want to go. And that's how you should. There's, I think there's three ways that we, what, of how we take the time that we have. We all have 24 hours. We either spend it, we waste it, or we invest it. So currently right now, I, this hour for me is investment. That meaning I can take information that I've gathered over my whole life and we can talk about that. We can influence a lot of people. We're investing who we are into a lot of people. Okay. Um, when you waste time, like a, a, an instance of wasting time is if you're just going to sit and watch TV. That's, that is a time waster. What if you're watching an educational con con video? That is either, that would be considered spending or investing. Okay. So spending is something that you, you do and you don't necessarily get a compounded return. Okay. But it's not blown. Sure. Right? Sure. So think about it, it's the same thing with money, right? If I'm wasting money, that means I'm just going to burn it. That would mean be like burning and disposing of money. Spending it would be going and using it for something else. And then oh, I invest it. Shoot. So if we're related to money, wasting is literally like losing money. Like you just like, you just dumped it and forgot about it. Spending would be, you're getting something out of that and it may not prove to have a return, but you're at least getting something in return. Okay. That. And the investments when that compounds and you get more back than what you spend. So I, oh, that's, that's good. Okay, okay, okay. So I, this is gonna be good questions. Thank you for that. Um, how do you, give me some other examples of how you can waste time because I can't think of any right now. How can you waste time other than TV? That's the one that everyone talks about. What's the other ways that you waste time? So a time waster would be if you have a commute every day in your car and you're driving for an hour and you're not listening to something that's empowering your life and changing your life, you're wasting time. If you want to listen to morning radio, talk show radio that's just talking about life, the majority of the time that's not really doing anything for you, to be honest. You're yeah. passing time, right? Wasting could also be seen, seen as passing time. You're, you're watching paint dry, right? Okay. So anything that you choose to do with your time that is in that manner, I, would, I see that as a waste. And we waste a lot of, listen, I go to the bathroom, I'm freaking reading a book. <laughs> yeah, sure. People ask me, they're like, Sean, how do you read a book a week? And it's because I actually take all of my time and in every spare moment that I have, I'm soaking something up. Yeah. I'm like a sponge. Like every morning I'm empty and dry and my goal is to be full by the end of the day. And then eventually I actually get to squeeze some of that out into other people's lives. Okay. This is good. This is good. How do you, what would be an example of wasting money? Like just off the top of your head. Like, uh, I mean, cause if you buy food, that's, that's not wasting money. If you buy expensive food. That's not wasting if, money. If you're buying food and it doesn't, and it's really bad for your body. Uh, that'd be a waste of money. That is a waste of money because, because just because you get something in return, you get energy, you're doing something bad for yourself. Mm, okay. 
Okay. The waste is really tough. I would say that my breakout is that you should spend 80% of your time in investment, Mm -hmm. 10% of your time in spending time and 10% in wasting. So you admit that there is time that you can waste. There's time. Everybody should waste some time. Okay. Everybody needs a little decompression so there, is and there, a waste of time. So right? is, is there good versus bad wasting is what you're saying? You can waste sure, time yeah. in a good way? I mean, you're going to go binge watch House of Cards. Which you've done. Which I've done, right? <laughs> it happens. It Everybody's going to do that, right? Sure. You're okay. going to watch that show. You're going to get some entertainment, but it's really not going to do anything for you. You could, you could really toss the spending and wasting yeah. into two different categories. Okay. I would say it's the same type of time. One's a better time for you than the other. This is one that I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm sorry for this, but it, you, it's okay. Go for it. Uh, this is one that is going to sound really almost cultish for you guys who are watching this. Um, I had a small breakthrough like three years ago when I read an article about Mark Zuckerberg and Chris Sag and Steve Jobs about how they always wore the same outfit. Yeah. And because of how much time it saved, how much money it saved, and it built a brand. And so I was like, that sounds really dumb. It sounds stupid, but I'm going to do it. So I bought a bunch of real life trading shirts and that's what I wear. Mm -hmm. I wear real life trading shirts and jeans or real life trading shirt and shorts. I wear real life trading everywhere I go. That's just, and, but it saves time when I'm getting dressed. It saves money because I don't have to buy any other clothes. I don't care what people say or do not say about me. But you do, I just realized, so we were in Germany a few months together uh, together uh, for a week. We went to Czech Republic and Prague and went to Germany and we went to the uh, Vulcan, how do you say it, Vulcan Sign and Fest? The Vol- Volkfest. The Volkfest. The Golden Volkfest. Golden Volkfest in uh, Straubing, Straubing, Germany. Straubing, yeah. We were there in August and I learned that you have like this routine when you get ready. Yep. So tell me other ways how you can invest in time because I know you do meal preps. Yep. That invests time mm-hmm. because it saves it. Yep. Um, you have like a, a weird clothes routine. So tell me, what do you wear on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays? Give me like your breakthrough. How do you, how do, you do this? So it breaks down to <laughs> – Because this, this is cool. For every one hour of planning saves you 10 hours of execute. Wait, wait. wait. Okay, so every one hour of planning. On something. So okay, take something that you're going to do. Okay. For every – most people just do, 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 and they execute. Sure. And then at the end of it, they're like, man, I just, I'm done. I'm too busy. I don't have time. What's going on? Yeah. If you would have taken an hour of your time and created a really great plan, it could potentially save you up to 10 hours of wasting of time because you planned properly and you were able to, as we call it in our business, we call it gaining minutes. That is so funny. I, I produced for the longest time, I only planned stock market stuff or like my trades or whatever. And I didn't even plan my day, but what, since I've started doing that four or five years ago, you're right. Like you, you initially feel like you're wasting your time because you're like, why do I have to sit down and plan my day? But when you, once you get that schedule and you get that rhythm, yep. you, you make yeah. it so efficient. Our bodies work Woo! in rhythms and cycles. Like we do yeah. this with sleep. Think about it. You sleep. You need to get into REM to get good sleep. Why doesn't that apply to everything else in your life? And that doesn't mean your life's cookie cutter. It just means you're more efficient. And it allows you to say yes to other things that you normally probably wouldn't be able to say yes to because you're so packed full of stuff. So what do you wear on Mondays? On Mondays, I wear, (laughs) it's so funny. (laughs) I wear the exact same thing every day of the week. So Mondays is a pair of black jeans, a gray t-shirt with like a black, a black V-neck. Yeah. And I wear black boots. Okay. Tuesday. Tuesday, I wear light gray jeans with like, Brown Allen Edmund shoes with a white button down and a blue blazer. Wednesday, which is today. I wear black jeans and a black shirt. I'm like Johnny Cash style. <laughs> it's a black V-neck and black, shirt. black jeans and black boots. Uh, now, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, do you wear the same thing on weekends or you just switch it For up? For the most part. Really? Unless I'm just throwing on sweatpants. Okay. That is wild. So what does that actually help? Do people notice? Oh, yeah, everybody. And people, it's very interesting. People will are influenced by that. And they'll find themselves doing some of the same things. This is a stupid question. Does that help you in your trading at all? Um, it helps me me process and be better, which helps me trade better. Yes. Bingo. It's weird. The things that can help you trade better is it comes down to that time, that efficiency. Because a lot of people say, I don't have the time to study. I don't have the time to research. 
here's the truth. Here, the truth is, folks, everyone knows this. This is a rhetorical statement. We all have the exact same amount of time. Mm -hmm. Everyone has, and time is, time is really an illusion. And I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, but you yeah. create, you create, the, I mean, the time that we live in right now was created in the Roman Empire, right? Uh, the, the calendar that we use, um, I mean, other countries and other cultures have different calendars. You have the Jewish calendar, the Chinese calendar. There's mm -hmm. different months, there's different days, there's different hours, there's different times, there's different names for it. Yep. Time is an illusion. Humans created time. Yep. And that's when people go on a cruise or something, they just totally let go and they don't know what time, they don't know what time it is. They don't know what day it is. I have had days where I have no clue what day it is because all I do is I just follow the same, the same system every day and I don't know what time it is. Yep. And it's actually kind of a good thing because you create that efficiency. You figure out ways to, to, to get more things done in a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. What's other ways that you, you find yourself more efficient? What's other ways that you uh, save time, invest time, and waste time? Is that correct? Absolutely. So, or spend time. Spend so time. I'm a uh, – and there's, these aren't new principles. Like the goal is, is really to package it in a different way. So I time block even my personal life. So in work every day – I spend 30 minutes in the morning checking email and then I only check email at the end of the day. My email doesn't push on my phone because I found it was distracting me. Mm -hmm. So all day my phone, like I was getting, this doesn't happen anymore. I changed my life about a year ago. I was getting 200 legit emails a day that I needed to respond to. So you got to think my phone all day is like, zzz, 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 zzz. I'm in a meeting. I'd be here. My phone's just lighting up. So I turned push off because it's creating anxiety in my life. I literally was like, I got to get on medication for this. <laughs> so I turned, it, I got bronchitis. So I turned and I turned it off. And then I told everybody at my office, I'm not answering email after 6 PM. If you need to talk to me about something, feel free to call me. Like, and we can have a conversation, yeah. but I'm not going to answer your email after 6 PM. Unless for some reason I'm traveling and I just happen to be doing emails. Right. So I created boundaries, like simple boundaries. Okay. Right. And then I began to block time. So I was like, okay, so I am going to, I need twice a day that I need to respond to emails and I'll respond within 24 hours. So I'll do it in the morning and the afternoon. And then I schedule certain types of meeting meetings in the morning then that are different in the afternoon because of the way that my body works. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm way more in tune. I'm sharper in the morning than in the afternoon. So I schedule like creative, conversational hangout meetings in the afternoon in the morning it's all about getting it done pounding it out checking it off the list once again dopamine it's just releasing in your brain yeah in the afternoon i'm more of coasting right right and then i get home and i shut down and my family time is investment time it's very very strategic i like to cook so the cooking for me is that wasting kind of just like having to decompress yeah and then but it's not really though spending because it is sort of spending you, know, you yeah. make food and people can benefit from that yeah so and i get the enjoyment out of it because of that decompression it helps me like ramp my day down right i'm landing the plane and then at night you know i may watch a show of tv but i don't sit there and watch tv for three hours a show of tv <laughs> Like one show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like yeah. Out 40 minutes, right? Yeah, a show. <laughs> Not four hours, guys, okay. right? So I'm either studying something online, I'm reading a book, maybe I'm playing cards with my wife, or we're sitting having a meaningful conversation, or maybe I'm choosing to spend that time that evening with a friend to learn something great, right? So the key is, for me, the big, big word is intentionality. We're not intentional enough in how we make decisions in our daily lives, and then we go five or 10 years down the road and then we go wonder why we're in a job that we hate, why we're not making more money, why our kids hate us, why our marriage sucks. And it's because all of those things compounded over a long period of time and we just made really bad choices every single day. And then years went by and we went, how in the world did that happen? So the first part of my book is how did, how did you get to where you are? And it's because you made certain choices with your time over that span of um, that have put you where you are now how can you get to where you want to go is how you're going to change all those habits of how you use your time to really get you to a different destination you mentioned a book so you written a book on this yes <laughs> so, I, I do know he wrote a book um, I'll send it to you guys when it's ready when's it gonna be ready I'm right, yeah, it's, it's being edited it will okay. release sometime this year and I can say it needs to be soon, man. You're killing me. <laughs> I know, you're killing me. <laughs> it's, it's really simple. It's simple concepts, but you got to really apply that to your life. And I think all of that can apply to trading as well. Uh, agreed. And, and the biggest way for me to wrap what up, uh, what Sean's saying in my own words too, is just prioritize. 
figure out what's really important to you, write it down and try it for an entire month and then two months and then three months, meaning you schedule it out. Try to create an entire schedule for four or five months. Now, granted, things are going to fall in into the wayside every now and then. Secondly, um, try to never say that you're busy because that's just an excuse. That's an excuse. that's an excuse for poor time management. If you say that you're busy, you are not taking control of your life. You're having other people control what you are doing. Uh, I have a, a really good um, friend up here with me. Uh, he's been up here for a week, and he told me that there's no way that he could coach for an entire week with me and uh, because he thought I was too busy, I'm not busy. I'm not. I, I'm not busy. I'm not. Yeah, I know you're not. You, you described me as yeah, busy. I did. Like, That's why I want to say this. I want to make sure I brought I it up it. that you're not busy. It's all about priorities. Um, right. I have the exact same 24 hours that you guys have. I have the exact same 24 hours that he has. We all have the same time. Prioritize, schedule. I know what I'm doing already in May of 2019. I've already got the week, the day, the time. I don't know about August 2018 yet. <laughs> I'm hoping we're going to France together. Ooh, uh, trip to Europe. So again, there's there's still things you leave out for spontaneity. Don't don't pretend that we're not a little spontaneous. We're not control freaks to an extent. Now, I will say we are a little control freaks, but true. We do have time for spontaneity. We'll have a weekend schedule where we go. You know what? I have no idea what we're doing this weekend. We're just going to go somewhere. We're going to go with the tide rules. But you block out that weekend. You block out that day. So bottom line, folks, if you want to learn trading, uh, get some books watch some videos, and then go hire someone, talk to someone, or learn from someone who is where you are at, whoever that person is. I'm not saying it's me. It could be him. It could be Frank Doyle. It could be Jesse James Levan. It could be Brian Weber. It could be Frank, uh, Fred Atwater. It could be Niels Christensen. It could be Thomas Wong. It could be any one of the 100 and 200 people in real life trading groups. It could be anybody. Go learn from someone who is trading real money. Ask them their schedule. Learn from them. And then you just simply have to apply it. You have to take that action. You have to take action. You're afraid, that's fine. You're gonna lose money, yes. You're gonna be scared, yes. You're gonna be wrong, that's okay. You will fail, accept it. It's just part of life, it's part of trading. Take a deep breath and remember one of my favorite quotes, and I, I honestly, I'm gonna get it tattooed at some point. Ooh. I'm saying that on camera. Ooh, uh -oh. I think I'm gonna get it tattooed right around here because um, I always forget the quote, but it's my favorite quote. I love it. It's something to the extent of, and I've said it before, uh, it's not our, uh, our failure that we're afraid of is that we're successful beyond all measure. Mm, it's good. Meaning that most people have planned out exactly what failure looks like. They know how much money they're going to lose. They know what their house would be worth. They know that their kids wouldn't love them. They know that their wife or husband wouldn't love them. They know that they'd be despondent. They wouldn't have a job. They've thought all about exactly what failure looks like, but they've never thought about what pure, unadulterated, blissful success looks like. Oh, it's so good. They've you're, never you're, thought about you're that. You're touching on something I'm like digging into lately. But it's so, so but like if you think about so what good. is just an, what is nirvana, what is heaven, what is paradise, whatever word you want to use, if it's this life or next life or past life, what is perfection? No one ever thinks about that. They don't allow themselves the so benefit good. and the grace and the blessing to put themselves in a perfect life with perfect kids, with perfect family, and just think what that looks like. Did you, did you have you read How to Become a Millionaire? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just read the other day. Jim, Oral uh, show. Yes, yes. Says, nobody talks about when you say, hey, Oh, Howard, that was so good. Tell me, tell us. Do Howard, this. Say this. Try this today, sure. all of you. Hey, somebody just mentioned Dylan Phillips. You said that all your students hate you. That's not their fault. This is tough love for you. That's only back on you because of this, right? Because you're going through Target checkout line. And the lady at the counter says, hey, how are you doing? And you're like, you know what? I'm having a pretty crappy day. Let me tell you all about my bad day. And we like to spew all the bad things and communicate that. But when something great's going on, we rarely go on. I'm having a great day. And let me tell you about that. Because listen, like these things are just crushing my life and I'm doing so well. Let me tell you about this new thing that just happened at work. We rarely communicate the great positive things in our life. We like to focus on the negative, right? So find the positive, tell somebody, and talk about it, right? Like we're not getting super crazy spiritual. This is just literally positively impact somebody's life. Instead of telling somebody something bad that happened, spend that and tell somebody two great things that happened to you. Because we, we all have great things that happen to us in our lives. We just choose not to talk about it, right? So tell somebody about that million dollars that you're going to make.
because that's going to happen. He's all about visualization. He's like, yeah, write it down, write it down, put it away. And that stuff's just going to continue to circle round and round and round. And those positive things are going to impact your life in a whole nother way. And you're going to, you're going to change people's lives because of that. I, I'm a big believer. James Earl Schoff. James Earl Schoff. Yes. Schoff. He was the mentor of Jim Rome. Uh, you sent me that. The day you sent me, I bought it. Uh, I have it right beside my bed. It's a, it's a like guys, it's like 13 pages long. It's so simple. You can read it in 20 minutes. Yep. Bottom line, it, it, it is the same thing that Aristotle or anyone else has ever said. It's nothing new. The point is, when I used to work at a corporate five, Fortune 500 job, nationwide insurance, I would go in the door, I would kick that door down. <laughs> and people would go, how's your day, Jeremy? i go, it would be, first of all, I'd be wearing a $2,000 suit, number one. Number two, I'd say it's going phenomenal. Everything about my life is perfect right now, and I want to tell you why. And people thought Ooh. I was on drugs, bro. I love it. I literally went to Human Resources twice for drug testing for cocaine. True That's story. Crazy. I at some point to piss everybody off, I bought the tuxedos from Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, the light blue one and the orange one. I bought those. Oh, that's so good. I wore those to work because there was no dress code about the color <laughs> of your suit. They said <laughs> there was no there was no dress code about that, and I got in so much trouble. Oh. They couldn't they couldn't do anything about it because I was like, point to me where I cannot wear an ostentatiously bright pastel tuxedo. You know why? Because you were loving life. You were living life. I was trading. Woo! Woo! Bang! Ladies and gentlemen, it. that is your Wednesday real life stock review. Folks, you are amazing. Uh, I said real life stock review. Real life interview with my buddy, Michael Sean Bennett. Folks, uh, I will send you guys the link to his book when it comes out, hopefully in February of 2018. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're done trading for the day. We made four hours of profit today. Woo, yeah. That's big. So, Brad, Stephen King, Dean, thank you so much for Spirit Airlines, for VRX. You guys are amazing. We're going to be back tomorrow morning from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with LaToya and, of course, myself. I'll be here this afternoon from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern for Energy Wednesday. Folks from around the world, thank you so much for tuning in. You are amazing. Uh, be Real Life Trader. Join the community. There is 100% upside benefit, no downside. What's the risk in that? I love it. Folks, you guys rock. I'll see you later. And until next time, love life, live life, and trade it. Bye.